This video is brought to you by Mr. Sick Boy and the 40% off coupon code linked down below for the amazing programs on building your wealth. One of which gets additional lectures this weekend totally for free. And of course, you know, the price goes up over time. So you may as well join before the price goes up. <laughs> Link down below. Hey Rumi, Kevin here. So I get another COVID test in about an hour. So far I'm two deaths tests and both are negative, but wow, this just feels like kind of sickness like that I've never had before. It's really weird. Uh, it's like this really weird slow ramp of like, oh, you got a sore throat and a little bit of cough nobody really cares about. And now all of a sudden it's just like, blah. The last two days have been pretty bad, which is weird because it's like day 10, I feel like, of having some symptoms. I don't know, it's just, it's bad. But anyway, uh, let's stay focused on the update and we'll keep this short. So this morning I literally woke up at 5.11 a.m. with anxiety over CPI's release, the consumer price index uh, readings. I had a dream that inflation skyrocketed against all expectations and all my long YOLOs that inflation was going to inflect down basically went into the toilet and it was really bad. So maybe it wasn't a dream, it was a little more like a nightmare. But anyway, I woke up like shaking, like, oh my gosh, what I, oh, it was just a dream. I look at my phone and I'm like, 5'11", I could still wake up and go report on CBI data. <laughs> so that's what I did this morning. And so here's what we learned beyond what we talked about this morning. Yesterday, Bloomberg was cheering how out of the last four of uh, four CPI readings that have happened, Bloomberg has been right, assuming that inflation was going to be higher than what the consensus estimates were. Well, this time, Bloomberg was finally wrong for the first time in five out of five readings. They were wrong because CPI numbers came in to match expectations. This led the 10-year treasury to fall slightly from 1.38 back to about 1.32, along with another bond auction that happened today, which kind of helped soften the yield a little bit. Now, what this reading symbolizes is very, very important going forward. Like Bloomberg being wrong here, and this inflation reading matching expectations and inflecting downward is a big deal. And I'm gonna explain why it's a big deal and exactly what you should be looking for going forward and how to particularly find which companies you might want to potentially go all in on. Well, I don't suggest you go all in on one company. I suggest you invest more into, <laughs> that is not financial advice either, but I'll tell you exactly what to research and where and maybe which companies to start paying attention to because there are some cool things brewing. So now let me back up a tiny little bit and explain this. For those of you who have been following my channel uh, for quite a while now, the last at least six months, you've regularly heard me say that I believe that inflation will inflect downwards in September and October, which those readings come out in October and November. This has the potential of creating a euphoric stock rally when we see inflation inflect downwards because right now so many people believe that inflation will definitely come in higher and stay higher than expected. That's why we're expecting a potential rally. Now let me explain that with a picture right after I mentioned that if you wanna get yourself a free stock, make sure to go to metkevin.com slash public. You can get a totally free stock when you go to metkevin.com slash public, download the app, sign up, you get a totally free stock and public is a company that lets you socially share your trades and they don't buy or sell any consumer information related to you. So folks, let's, uh, unlike other brokerages, let's go over to this little thing I drew here. Take a look at this. So this right here is the thesis. The thesis is that in September and October, inflation has inflected down and we end up getting a rally in tech. Now, I think this rally in tech has a little bit of an asterisk going into 2022 because I think year over year comps are going to be potentially problematic, but I'm not so worried about that. I'm more worried about seeing the rally come first and then that way I can make some trades off that. The risk obviously is that services and rents keep going up and that inflation keeps going up, which would lead tech to fall. However, today we ended up having a very, very good move or, or representation in the CPI report, which showed that in our rents only ended up going up about 0.2%, which is really good because that works out to uh, a, let's see, 2.4% uh, annualized inflation rate. Right now, rents have gone up about 6.6% year over year. Home prices are up like 20% year over year. But if there's a compression in returns, we might not actually see rents go up as much, which plays into the strategy of waiting until September to no November for a rally. 
This is why 80 to 90% of my portfolio is long this rally. Now, I've pulled back slightly from what I used to be, which was just 100% YOLO on waiting for that September to November rally. I've pulled back a little bit on this by selling some call options and by holding more cash. I'm doing this as a hedge, but you can see that obviously 80 to 90% of my portfolio is still long this rally, and I'm looking forward to that. Rents coming in at 0.2% this month was really, really good. Cars, used cars coming in basically flat, very, very good. We expect that. We saw used car prices do this, and now they're kind of flat. This makes sense. That's the way inflation works. And remember, it's so important. Regularly, people are like, well, <coughs> well, Kevin, if prices go up, why would they ever come down again? They don't have to for inflation readings not to be lower. They just have to stay flat. That's all they have to do. Like used car prices could just stay like this. They start doing this, that's deflation, right? So anyway, keep that in mind. That's why September, November timeframe, like there's a reason I'm 80 to 90% long on, on that potentially rally happening. And today's CPI report reiterated that. Also, if we look at the services numbers that came in, the services numbers were also way lower. Services were virtually flat. So we were virtually flat uh, Well, on, on rents. Uh, sorry, um, rents were up 0.2%. Flat on used cars and uh, pretty much flat on services, which is pretty good. We want to see that because we don't really want to see hyperinflation or big inflation numbers. I don't think anybody wants to see that. And that was the concern with these inflation readings was that we would end up in the situation where, okay, fine, we get all this crazy inflation, then we get an inflection downwards in used car prices going down and maybe airline travel going down, oh no, but then come along rents and services and they end up keeping inflation high. That was the concern, but so far that doesn't appear to be the case. Instead, the case is that these are actually not coming in to prop up inflation. And so we're starting to see that inflection point to the downside. Really, really good for the long strategy uh, that I have. Now, I wanna talk about some specific stocks and some other things that are going on, especially things that you wanna pay attention to. So uh, let me get some of these things out of the way, then we'll go to specific stocks. First, Federal Reserve already came out and they said, ah, oh, see, this is working exactly as planned. Keep in mind, they do expect to taper pretty soon, but they're not necessarily saying they have to raise rates right away. In fact, they think the sooner they taper, the longer they can wait to raise rates. So in some way, tapering sooner could actually potentially be good news that rates won't go up as soon. Very interesting. The market is, it's incredibly confusing. And I think that uncertainty in the market is literally what we're seeing with stocks like Moderna right now. Like, why is Moderna down like 16% on the day and Caterpillar is up 3.5%? I think the market's just literally scrambling, trying to figure out where the heck should we go? Uh, in fact, yeah, Moderna right now uh, is also down another 1% in the after hours, down to 385 at the moment. That thing has been moving like a momentum stock. It's crazy. It's really because the market is clueless. The market is starting to slowly ingest like, wait a minute, what if inflation does inflect downwards? What if we actually do end up having lower inflation? Like, where do we invest? And what about Delta? <laughs> Speaking of Delta, I cough. Anyway, so, <laughs> okay. Now let's, let's get a little bit more specific and zoom in here a little bit. So we know there's a lot of uncertainty and one of the, and, and, a, and a lot of noise I like to call it. But one of the things in my opinion that you can use to get through the noise is reading earnings transcripts. Folks, seriously, read the earnings transcripts of quality companies. I'm gonna give you a list of quality companies in a moment, but I wanna give you an example, okay? Enphase, Enphase, the microinverter solar play, they, in my opinion, are getting set to explode with earnings once supply chain shortages subside. Here's why. I was reading the Enphase earnings call and they literally expect to over double their production capacity of microinverters by the end of the year. They already said their ASIC supply chain shortages are over. Now they're just waiting for some additional supply chain constraints to loosen up so they can double production of their microinverters for which they have a massive amount of demand. This is going to lead to an explosion in in my opinion, revenue for the company and ultimately the stock price. And so this is making me very bullish on Enphase. And this is why I'm going through all of the earnings transcripts, especially while I'm sick, I'm not able to do much anyway. So I just sit there with my iPad and I read and I'm going through company after company after company, looking for things that could end up being surprises that the market just isn't paying attention to. Here are the companies that are on my list of companies that I'm watching. 
Tesla, and Base, EXPI, Palantir, Redfin, Lemonade, Square, Wayfair, Ubiquity, Disney, Sunrun, Google, Apple, Amazon, although Google, Apple, uh, uh, Apple and Amazon probably less so out of all of these, but anyway. Canadian Solar, AMD, NVIDIA, HUD8 Mining, SoFi, Coinbase, not Robinhood at these prices, it's too high, but lower, yes. Invite, CRISPR, DocuSign, Upwork, ChargePoint, and Blink. You'll notice that I actually have not included Peloton on that list, uh, and uh, that's mostly because I'm starting to see a little bit of an inflection point in people not caring as much about uh, at-home workout uh, bikes. And I think uh, if Peloton really, I think their next run comes when they start coming out with strength training products, which they will, with their announcement of hopefully pre-core products since they bought pre-core and now they can announce new pre-core products. I think we're going to need to see some new products before we see another big, big, big push on the Peton. Just my thought could obviously be wrong. I'm not talking bad about Peton. I still hold some Peton, but I'm just not as heavy as I was previously. And we'll see. That could change. I'll keep you updated. The market's always changing. But anyway, uh, these are some of the companies that I'm definitely paying attention to right now and reading through earnings reports through. I should be done within the next day, day and a half. And they'll kind of keep reporting on updates like these, at least one video a day to kind of let you know what the heck is going on. Uh, I also want to mention... Oh, yeah, actually, before I mention this next part, I do want to say uh, there are about, uh, right now, <laughs> geez, uh, for all those of you who have downloaded the Meet Kevin app in the Apple or Google Android, there are thousands of you who have downloaded this app and who use the app for notifications or whatever, which is great. But in terms of those of you actually doing the share competition, there, we, we can count that in the number of hundreds. So remember, we are going to uh, give away... Uh, about we're going to give away 100 courses and we're going to give away uh, 10 private jet flights from Los Angeles, actually probably Oxnard, California to Las Vegas. you got to get yourself here, but then we're going to have fun in Vegas. We're going to kind of party together as a thank you to the the folks contributing and sharing on social media uh, stuff about my campaign. So if you haven't joined that challenge yet, it's free to join. It's randomly weighted, uh, which means uh, everybody has a chance uh, to win. So check that out. Uh, download the app at Meet Kevin in your app store and join the challenge. So just share anything of me or from me on social media. There's plenty of stuff to share. Now for RCC, I think it's worth mentioning that for the cash portion, I really think cash could be cash-like investments as well which could be like a basket of index funds or the S&P 500. So you don't have to be purely in cash. I personally am because it's a smaller part of my portfolio anyway. And I don't mind waiting for opportunities because there's really no pain in the street right now. Nobody's freaking out right now. And there are always times every single year there's a point where somebody's freaking out. So I don't mind waiting a little bit uh, for or a time in the market when everyone's freaking out. I don't mind waiting for those opportunities. Right now things are a little expensive. So I'm spending more time doing research uh, on real estate. I have an offer out on a real estate deal. I'm excited about that. I'll keep you updated on that. And on crypto, got a good, solid, happy position here. It's not as big as I would like, but I'm accepting of it. And uh, I'm kind of just watching it go up because, well, crypto is doing very well. Uh, and so is Coinbase, which is wonderful. Finally, <laughs> it's been through, uh, we've been through one heck of the last uh, four months in the crypto world. Been a big old dip the last four months. But anyway, things are finally returning. Uh, interestingly, it's also worth noting that stay at home is falling. Uh, this is not too much of a surprise because it'd be too easy. To just go, oh, Delta's coming. Let's just go into stay at home plays. I feel like the market is kind of like playing chess and there are a few moves ahead of that already. Uh, a lot of Bloomberg articles about AMC and theaters potentially having trouble through Delta and uh, that AMC's got a little bit of ways to go. Even though they have got, they say they've got $200, uh, $2 billion worth of cash, they've got a lot of debt. And uh, in their cash count, they're including credit lines, which isn't really cash. So this is just so you know what kind of like the, the suits are saying on Wall Street. And I understand I'm wearing one, but then again, I had an interview. Yeah, I know the way it sound with CBS and the LA Times. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I know I'm dying. But at least I'm transparent about how I feel. But anyway, uh, still excited about this potential euphoric rally. We uh, also see Wayfair back over 300. For those of you in stocks and psychology of money, you probably remember when this thing was 230 and I'm like, yeah, this thing's going back over 300. It's back over 300. As always, check out the courses a link down below. We uh, also have talk from Bloomberg that the battery shortfall is expected to worsen for EV development, which is obviously not good, but is expected to worsen before it gets better. All right, with that said, make sure to get the courses linked down below. They're amazing programs. Thank you so much for being here. I'll be adding content to the Stocks and Psychology and Money Group this weekend. Use that 40% off coupon code linked down below. The price does go up over time. And folks, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.